Mr. He and I traveled in New York City for a week. In this video, we are going to explore 17 hand-picked restaurants. From the most expensive seafood buffet to native allowed authentic Japanese ramen. We were staying at one of the New York's finest hotels. Have two queen beds. Kind of strange. Take one, Mr. He take one. <laughs> no? Dive right into the deliciousness in New York City. Each land ramen is our first stop. We arrived at 9 o'clock, and despite the late hour, there's still so many people waiting outside. You get to customize your ramen while waiting in the line. Where is, where is? We are finally inside! I'm starving! Simply hand over your order sheet to the staff member behind the booth. Here comes my personalized bowl of each line ramen. I was going to crack the half-cooked egg into my ramen. Uh-oh, then it turned out to be fully cooked. The noodles are perfectly chewy, the broth is rich and flavorful, and the toppings, oh, the toppings are just complete the masterpiece. So much. Each ramen combo is $29, but you can enjoy a ramen refill for only $4. I also ordered their matcha pudding, which you can skip. Although it's kind of pricey, each line has definitely matcha exaltations. Oh. On the second day, we visited a sea, air, and space museum. Mr. He was having a great time playing G-Force Simulator with a boy. Because Miss She is too scared to crash with me. No, no, I was getting ready for the most expensive seafood buffet. I didn't want to upset my stomach before that. No bread. No bread. Miss She is filling up her stomach with no. free bread. Here's my mom saying hi. Yeah. We paid $115 for my mom, so she can have unlimited giant lobsters. Miss Xi and I don't feel like having lobsters today, so we chose the $80 buffet. It's not like that, Mr. He didn't mm, bring enough baby. money. It's okay, I can still have the mini mm. lobsters. Under the $80 plan, you can enjoy unlimited servings of crawfish, snow crab, fresh oysters, mussels, jumbo scallops, as well as steaks, fried chicken, and many other dishes that we didn't order due to limited stomach space. This could be the most fresh seafood I have ever tasted in the US. If you are a seafood lover and have good appetite, we highly recommend this place. After lunch, we took a long walk along 5th Avenue. We decided to have some special bubble tea to boost our energy. I ordered the peach green tea. Miss she had a dark poop milk tea. Peach green tea is too ordinary. The meaning of travel is try something special. Bye, Miss Xi, 2023. We were so stuffed after the seafood buffet, so each of us got a bread from Paris Baguette for a light dinner. We're going to Statue of Liberty. On day three, we took a boat to visit Statue of Liberty. After that, we had a lunch at a Shanghai restaurant called Three Times Dim Sum. We had spicy braised beef noodles, which was loaded with beef. Their pan-fried pork bun was almost good oh, as Miss cheese. We also had wonton soup, beef and grass noodle soup, and xiaolongbao. The soup dumpling passed the soup test. The pork filling had a fresh taste and hand-chopped texture. We all agreed that this restaurant didn't use any frozen ingredients. In the afternoon, we visited Wall Street and tried the blue bottle coffee. Their cup looks cute, but I think Mr. He actually can make a better coffee. Oh. Then we had dinner at an authentic Chinese restaurant called Jiangnan, where we found dishes that reminded us of the flavor from our hometown. I ordered stir-fried sliced eel. The last time I had this dish was 10 years ago when I visited my father-in-law's for the first time. Ever since then, it has become my favorite. My mom ordered sauteed eggplant and crab meat tofu. I ordered a spicy citron pepper fish. I'm so addictive to the numbing taste from strand peppercorns. These are what an authentic Chinese restaurant should have. Not orange chicken or walnut shrimp. We went back to the hotel after dinner. Then Miss Xi and I sneaked out to have ice cream at Van Nguyen. We had blueberry shortcake and lemon sorbet. They both rock! 
For the first lunch, we randomly walked into a Taiwanese restaurant called South Village. We had braised beef rice, Taiwanese sausage, Taiwanese popcorn chicken, sashimi oil chicken soup, braised beef and tender noodles, and jade cucumber salad. The food wasn't too bad, but the service made us feel uncomfortable. And the dining environment was hot and smoky. I don't think we would ever go back again. In the afternoon, we went to the Museum of Natural History. We watched tons of ants moving leaves and two grasshoppers doing some exercise. New York is much hotter than Michigan. Even my Asian mom, who always drinks hot water, asked for an iced tea after our visit to Central Park. Later, we had dinner at an authentic Japanese restaurant called Otoya. I had unagi ju. The eel was soft and delicious, but forty one was a little bit pricey for two slices of eel over rice. My mom had grilled fish. It was very juicy and perfectly flavored. I had sukiyaki, which is thinly sliced beef, tofu, and vegetables, with a soy sauce-based sweet sauce in a hot pot. Don't forget to add a hot spring egg for dipping the beef before enjoying this delicious dish. On day five, we moved to a hotel located in downtown Flushing, Queens. Renowned for hosting the largest Chinatown in the world, the hotel is right next to the Tiangran Shopping Mall. There are probably more Chinese restaurants in this shopping mall than there are in the entire state of Michigan. If I become rich, I want to move this mall to Michigan. How about just move ourselves to New York? Hmm, you're so smart. For lunch, we had a pineapple butter buns with matchy matchy bubble tea. We always order wonton soup and pan fried soup dumplings whenever we see them on the menu. The pan fried soup dumplings were so 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 delicious that we couldn't resist getting. Eat more to take back to the hotel, even though we were already full. We happened to come across the grand opening ceremony of the Angry Bird Cafe. Later, we had dinner at an authentic Beijing restaurant called Juqi. Every corner in this restaurant had a distinctive Beijing style. We were welcomed by a plate of stir-fried broad beans. That's my dad's favorite snack to go with wine. We ordered the plum juice with our spices, boneless duck feet with wasabi, braised pork meatball. It's a very traditional Chinese method to steam meatball in a ceramic mug. There was an salted duck head yolk hiding inside the tender meatball. This dish is called Buddha jumps over the wall. It is renowned for its expensiveness. The name of this dish is a reference to the idea that the aroma of this dish is so enticing that it could even tempt a vegetarian monk to jump over a temple wall to taste it. Finally, here comes our roasted Peking duck. This is my most looking forward to food during this trip. The duck was prepared next table by a chef and served in three ways. Caviar on top of crispy skin, traditional duck wraps, and then your choice of soup or salt pepper stir-fried duck. The duck was beautifully sliced and presented on a traditional Chinese chest. The sauce for duck was house-made and very special. Now let me show you how to wrap Peking duck like a pro. Mr. He just learned it one minute ago. Now he's teaching you guys. Yeah, place two to three slices of Peking duck and vegetables on the pancake. Fold the end of the pancake towards you, then roll it up with the chopsticks inside. Then remove the chopsticks. Ta-da! My favorite dish today is the duck skin paired with the caviar and the toasts. It was crispy like heavenly. The duck oil literally bursted into my mouth. For dessert, I ordered an almond tofu in peach shape. Does it look familiar to you? I got inspired by this dish and made a peach ice cream right after we went home. I ordered this. Ah. That tasted just so so. Each of us only ate one piece, and that piece had the word "fa" written on the top. On day six, we went to the Woodbury Common Premium Outlets. 
I was so surprised to discover a Lady M store in the outlet mall. We had my favorite Mecca milk crepes and their signature milk crepes. Surprisingly, I found Lady M's iced latte to be even tastier than the one from Blue Bottle. We returned to our hotel at 11 p.m. absolutely hungry. Luckily, the restaurants in New York's Chinatown often stay open late. We decided to have a hot pot at Xiaolong Khan. It turned out to be this restaurant's first year anniversary, and each table got a token for the chance to win an LV bag. At the South Bar, there's not only all types of ingredients for making a tasty dipping sauce, but also self-service appetizers, including spring rolls, salad, peanuts, red bean soup, and my favorite, bean fen jelly. Once seated, we were told that as part of their anniversary celebration, every table can have a free Boston lobster. What a lucky day! We ordered a Mercedes hot pot, which had three different flavors of broth. The crispy deep fried pork is our must order when we have hot pot. You can eat a few bites right away while you are waiting for the broth to heat up, and then dip into the broth for the different flavor and texture. We can tell the quality of a hot pot restaurant by Chinese beef balls if they have a bouncy homemade-like texture. The rest of the dishes will be all excellent. Another item worth trying, which often gets overlooked, is frozen tofu. Unlike fresh tofu, frozen tofu contains many small cavities, so it can soak up the hot pot broth like a sponge, making it incredibly juicy and flavorful. Oh, this poor lobster doesn't want to be cooked, but we have never tried to add a lobster into a hot pot. We will remember you forever, Mr. Lobster. Mr. Lobster tastes naturally sweet, and when cooked, in a hot pot, it absorbs the savory and aromatic flavors from the broth. It was almost midnight, but the hot pot restaurant was still fully packed. The food, service, and dining atmosphere were all 10 out of 10. It gave our New York food tour a perfect ending. You can find all the restaurant information and the food we tried in this description box below. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this video or like us. See you next time. Take care. Bye.